recording. If you know just a little about the Quran, you might be worried about us. After all, we started breaking this book down in January, and here it is July, where we've only made it through 18 of the 114 surahs. Quick bit of math would suggest that at this rate, we won't be done until March of 2019, but fear not, for the surahs get shorter as we go, and we did, in fact, pass the halfway mark at the end of the last reading. So as bad as this week's selection was, it felt really good having more Quran in my left hand than in my right. Yeah, and I enjoyed getting halfway done with using the Tor browser for this segment so I can still fly on airplanes. <laughs> and that's the only reason I know about the Tor browser. Moving on. <laughs> Me too, me too. <laughs> and of course, masochism is always more fun when you're doing it to somebody else. So joining us for yet another Holy Book Breakdown is my lovely wife, Lucinda. Lucinda, welcome back. You know, this probably counts as spousal abuse. I'm just putting that out there for you. Well, then I'm fulfilling my Quranic obligation. Ah, yes. So we had five surahs to knock out this week, although if you told me it was the same one five times, I'd be hard-pressed to argue. But just to be thorough, we're going to take them in order, starting with Surah 19, Mary. All right, so we're going to open this one with God agreeing to make Zachariah's old-ass wife squirt out a man-child. And, and God says yes, but immediately Zachariah's having second thoughts. He's like, oh, did not think you were going to uh, to answer so quickly. Or I'd have been praying for J-Lo's ass full of jello shots. Uh, so, so explain to me how this works with my, with my wife's antique vagina. <laughs> yeah, right. And God's like, well, Zachariah, you ever see a scene in a movie where a guy blows on a very old book? It's going to be like that. <laughs> Cannonball hitting a daffodil. Oh, anyway, so John is born. He is nice to his parents. And then we're on to God's baby's mama. Right. And uh, the angel Gabriel shows up and tells her she's pregnant. And Mary mm. says, yeah, I'm pretty sure I never had sex, so it's impossible. And Gabriel says, uh... You go to sleep sometimes, right? Have you seen Loving the Bad Man? <laughs> <laughs> but in Muhammad's version, Jesus preaches even when he's just a little baby, though. Uh -huh. And I have to say, not a big fan of all the you know sexism and murder endorsement here in this book, but that's fucking adorable. Little baby, itty-bitty Jesus delivering the Sermon of the Mount. That, that Come on. Thing. That's yeah. adorable. Take this fucking animal adorable. quicker. It is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> See, adorable. I was actually picturing right. more like a, you know, baby Herman with a cigar, just like, hey, oh, <laughs> blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor. <laughs> Stop being Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we brought up Jesus, so the book has to remind us in no uncertain terms that Jesus was not God's son. Mm -hmm. Mom may have been a virgin, but God was not the father. Yeah, and uh, this is important, actually. God is omnipotent. Tent, apparently, and I guess his resurrections often last more than four hours. Well, sometimes 2,000 years, and nobody comes, so, yeah, it's a big problem. Eventually, though. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. My jaw's tired. <laughs> All right, tap, tap, you're good. Tap, tap, it's fine. And then he makes it very clear that the Christians are going to hell. Mm -hmm. And, of course, everyone's uncle who's ever Pascal wagered over the potatoes at Thanksgiving will read that and instantly turn Muslim. Of course. Right? Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Come on, Uncle Jerry. Works, Come on. Jim. Yeah. This is why I gotta pretend I work in radio. <laughs> <laughs> Dying words, just Christian, no, uh, Jewish, no, Muslim. Uh, I'm gonna spin. I'm gonna spin. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. <laughs> Buddhism. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and we actually close out on a reminder that when Muslims kill people, they stay dead. Mm -hmm. I'm yep. not really sure why they felt like they had to point that out. Maybe fucking with the Jews about Jesus or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, and then Mary is over, and da da yeah. da da. Ta. And that brings us to Surah 20, Taha. And what does Taha mean in Arabic? Nothing. It translates to Taha because this book is so filled with shit we've already covered that they had to name it after the magic letters at the beginning. <laughs> and Jesus. I would like to point out that this is our eighth instance of magic letters with no meaning. Right. I can't mispronounce Chimera, but the second largest religion in the world has a book with made up words in it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Muhammad didn't have Twitter. I get it. <laughs> And and if you're hoping for anything new in this one, he quashes that early. Oh, yeah. Basically, you get eight verses of, how about that God, huh? Huh? And then he literally says, did I ever tell y'all about Moses? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And it, it felt like the beginning of a, like a Muslim fast food training video. Muhammad just walks past the camera and then he backs back up. Oh, hello. Didn't didn't see you there. Have you heard about <laughs> Moses yet? Uh, yeah, you made me watch a four-hour video about him just now. Just like, now. Right. Just Congratulations on your new job as a Muslim. <laughs>
The winning team. <laughs> well, and he's cramming all the Moses shit into this book in such a hurry, you'd think the Quran didn't get picked up for another season or something. Yeah, right. He's like, hurry, <laughs> hurry. If we ever get a time machine and go back and find that Muhammad was a literal parrot, I will be 0% surprised. <laughs> That's... Molting over here. <laughs> <laughs> so then Allah sends Moses to see Pharaoh because he's transgressed all bounds and all. But in verse 44, God's all like, but, you know, don't be a dick about it. You know, just... Just go in there, be cool. Say, hey, man, you know, how about letting my people go like a sport? Am I right? Yeah, bring bring me up casually. Like, say we had, we were having lunch and then tell me how he reacts. Like, does he? <laughs> tell me where he looks. Does he look right at you? <laughs> Speaking of literally anything, uh, I was hanging out with God of the Universe the other day. And, uh, <laughs> it's so funny. We were playing MASH and it was you and God in a mansion with four kids and a camel. What? Who knows? So weird, right? Who knew? Yes, no, Crazy. maybe, circle. <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys both have Facebook? So so Moses dances, the Pharaoh's magician dance back, and, uh -huh. and then they set up a time to race down that hill and see once and for all who's the best skier on the mountain. But, but, but Eli, admit it, though, when you read in verse 69 where it says, quote, a magician shall never thrive, end quote, you had a maybe it is prophetic moment, right? You had, <laughs> you had like a... Oh, fuck it knows. I mean, yeah, bar mitzvahs pay great, but how many rich Jews are really turning 13 in any calendar year? I mean, <laughs> it's true. It's true. I mean, I don't want to be Reza here, but like if it also means a magician can never be happy, that's a minority report <laughs> shit right there. I'll put a little <laughs> white hat. Not the yarmulke, but they got like the slightly larger yarmulke. You know, the one cab drivers wear. <laughs> one of those. I feel like bar mitzvahs should do the same thing with magic as they do with dancing. You know, you hire a bunch of black people to have amazing reactions and make it look fun for everybody. <laughs> An asshole yeah. teenager. Except it would be very obvious that those black people did not know anyone at the bar mitzvah. That's a bad plan. <laughs> Stand your ground, Morty. Stand your ground. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I want you to know that I voted for Bernie Sanders and he marched with you people, right? You're a big fan of him. Huh? Oh, shit. Look whose lives matter over here. <laughs> so, yeah. I will do our 60-minute show of just a whole Jewish couple trying to impress the black backup magic dancers that they've been fighting by <laughs> Oh shit. oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, good luck getting back on track there, Lucinda. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, um, all the non-tabernacle dimension parts of Exodus, and then 30 verses of how badass Allah is going to be and how bad hell is going to suck. Right. I, I yeah. love in verse 114 where it tells us not to be, quote, impatient with the Quran before the revelation is complete, end quote. You know, it's almost like it's saying, I promise to be good eventually. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Allah's that friend that assures you if you watch it all, Lost won't suck, and it does. It does still suck. Lost and the Koran. Not sure which more. <laughs> By the way, have we done a single Quranomaniac segment without him telling the story of Satan not bowing to Adam? Oh, God. Even one? I think that might be as consistent a part of this bit as the guys arguing Arabic in the intro. Right? <laughs> Yeah. Muhammad's pretty much exactly that drunk dad trying to hang at the beer pong table during parents weekend at college. And he's having a lot of trouble. <laughs> now he's telling the same story for the 19th fucking time. Four touchdowns in one game. Four of them. Uh, uh, four of them. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Who's next? How old are you, 19? I'm close to 19. <laughs> in dog ears. Woo woo! <laughs> now my kid's here. I should drive him. I should drive home. He's pretending not to know me. I see you, Daniel. See you. Best years of your life are ahead of you. And speaking of drunken <laughs> rambling, we've still got three more of these to knock out. So with Taha in the books, we can turn to Surah 21, The Prophets. And apparently this whole chapter is about how full of shit this book isn't. Uh, it, it, but I think in verse 17, that's the first time the book felt the need to assure us that Allah does not consider this godding thing to be a hobby. This is his full-time job, and that's good time. to know. Yeah, commitment is important. Yeah, what the fuck is this supposed to mean? I mean, are there gods that just aren't in it to win it? I guess. The only <laughs> original thing about this book is that it constantly answers the burning questions I never had or could possibly have about right. God. I, I do want to see that, like hobbyist god though like the rest of them are all serious and angry at like a god convention he just walks in hey check out this universe i've been working on i uh wrote a few chords to go with it 
It's like, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. That's all I got so far, but. You want to buy some pot? No? I'm also an Uber driver. Here's my card. <laughs> Andy Wilson of deities. <laughs> Get to it when he gets to it. Andy Wilson sells pot. <laughs> That's the rumor I want to start. That's what I want someone to take away from that joke. Oh, good. That's it. That answers so many QED questions for me. So <laughs> then in verse 30, we get a little more awesome scientific foreknowledge for you. In verse 30, it says that God made all living things out of water. So from a scientific standpoint, the fact that we're solid at room temperature disproves this book. Uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Also, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Yeah, pretty much yeah. all of them. Maybe yeah. God forgot about those. He's not, he's not a magic. Wait. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and basically, this chapter's whole argument is, I mean, fucking trees, am I right? Right. And, and maybe it's just me and the fact that I was reading this at like four in the morning. But this section seemed really beggy to me. Like, come on, trees, trees, guys. OK, just watch me jerk off. You don't even have to touch <laughs> it. You don't even have to touch it. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Just work my arm. Just work my I'm arm. a good guy. <laughs> And do you guys remember two chapters ago when, uh, you know, we talked about Abraham at length? Well, Muhammad has underestimated your memory again, Ben, because we are, uh, we're going to talk about him again right now. Yes. If you mm -hmm. don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you remember, Forgot. though, all that stuff Eli said three, six, nine, and 12 weeks ago? So <laughs> funny. So <laughs> funny. I'd also like to add Ibn, if you know what I mean. Ibn. Yeah, right. <laughs> Call back. Nailed it. I love it. The Quranic version of a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just Old Testament's greatest hits from there on out. It's yeah. Old, old And Testament. I have so many sentences in a row that start with, and remember so-and-so? It's like talking to one of your old relatives. I just keep waiting for Muhammad <laughs> to tell me how he knew me when I was this tall. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> And then he gets corrected by his wife from the other room. No, you knew him when he was that tall, remember? <laughs> we didn't visit for two years because his mom was dating a uh, colored fellow, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it always ends up racist. Well, it always does. Who, who, who knows? That could still come out. There's still plenty of time, what with two surahs still to go tonight. So that's going to bring us to 22, The Pilgrimage. So we start off with this awesome description of the apocalypse where all the pregnant women miscarry and everybody gets drunk. <laughs> mm, right. Pretty so... awesome. College. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm using Miss Carrie. <laughs> like, Jersey Shore? Or Planned Parenthood? Vegas Elevator? Can we combine the two apocalypses? The apocalypse where you all shit yourself and the apocalypse where all the women Miss Carrie and get drunk at the same time? I mean, it's not a clean night, but it's a fun night. You know what I'm saying? So let, it get, let us get our laughs in quick before all the bad shit starts. <laughs> then we get another awesome Quranic lesson on embryology. It says, as proof of the end times, mind you, that Allah created us from dust, then sperm, then clotted blood, then a lump of flesh. So now just to be thorough, I jacked off on a dirty, severed earlobe, but no humans were created. So I'm pretty sure this is bullshit. That's just nasty. Okay, but can I have my earlobe back now? Oh, so the experiment's over. So. Uh -huh. Well, hold on. I I'm still using it. Doing some peer review on it. I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> so then there's this weird bit in verse 15 where it um, <sighs> dares us to build a space elevator. I don't know. <laughs> it, here, here's the quote. It's not clear at all. <laughs> Anyone who thinks that God will not help him in the world and the hereafter, let him stretch a rope up to the sky, then let mm. him cut it off and see if his plan can help to remove the cause of his anger. End okay. quote. Okay, so here's the thing. This is actually a reference to a real thing. There's there's a old, like, urban legend magic trick that's around since ancient times called the Indian rope trick. And it's a fakir hoax from way back. And basically the trick is the magician charms a rope in the sky and then send his, sends his assistant up, and then the assistant disappears. And while the history of the trick is actually very interesting, what's important for us to recognize is that this is Moe's version of, oh yeah, well if God's not real, then how come David Blaine can float like yeah, that? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, well, uh, wow, yeah, the Saudi version is is way different. It, it just says atheists should hang themselves. That's what it said in my copy. <laughs> All right, then. Ready, quote. Whoever thinks Allah will not help him, let him stretch out a rope to the ceiling and let him strangle himself. Oh, wow. Then let oh, him see okay. whether his plan will remove that whereat he rages, end quote. Oh, wow. And um, that's not funny. I feel like we should dox this Muhammad guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
a <laughs> fucked up magic trick, dude. Yeah, no, yeah, no As shit. someone who's hung a rope from the ceiling and choked themselves many times, I've seen a lot of bright colors, <laughs> but never the Muslim god. So, huh. you know. We're going to have to try again. Buddy system. Right? Buddy system. <laughs> <laughs> then we get another one of those parts where you can just hear Muhammad rage jerk in it to his own hell description. He's, he's talking about us. He's talking about people who don't worship God. And he says, quote, those who deny the truth will have garments of fire cut for them and boiling water will be poured <laughs> over their heads. Anything Garth. in their stomachs as well as their skins will be melted by it. There will be maces of iron for them and on and on like that for for an entire holy book, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. but this passage brings up several follow-up questions. Yeah. One, who is the fire tailor? Like, who yeah. has, what's the cut on that? Do they fit perfectly? Are they too small? Like, inquiring minds want to know. Also, everything in their stomachs as well as their skins will be melted? Yeah, right. Like, someone's going to be fine with having their skin melted off, but knowing that mac and cheese they had for dinner is going with them will just be too much. <laughs> I feel like Muhammad's really overthinking the uh, fire torture scenarios he's coming up with. Like, <laughs> last time it was a fire cubicle that had uh, waiter service. <laughs> yeah, right. And now it's a fitted fire suit, and then the fire suit goes away immediately, so it's useless because of the water getting poured on you, which <laughs> right? then melts your skin, but also microwaves your stomach until it's empty somehow what the fuck is happening it, it just <laughs> it seems like the scribe was just bringing up nonsense objections to fuck with muhammad like what if the jews wear ice pajamas fuck fine it's a, it's a, it's a slim cut fire suit there wouldn't be any yeah. uh, god damn it <laughs> then we finally get to the pilgrimage stuff in verse 27 and we're done with it in verse 29 yes. it, that's what the chapter's titled after it basically has two sentences about the hajj and it really just says hey you guys should come walk around my cube so yeah. like, like virtually all the other surahs this one is about nothing it's just muhammad bitching about associating partners with god listening to the cast of the old testament and saying mean shit about jews again yeah and <laughs> that's it. i gotta admit you really hope for more than two sentences to be the cause of massive trampling deaths every year. This is like finding out Hitler was motivated by his ex in Poland, texting him, let's totally get coffee next time you're in town. <laughs> <laughs> you want to... Right now! <laughs> he also talks shit about how all the other gods put together couldn't steal from a fly, but Allah could. Not sure exactly what valuables you'd want to steal from a fly, but there you go. Yeah. He can do it. Yeah, and with that vital nugget of information yes. holstered, we can move on to our last surah for the night, The Believers. Mm -hmm. And right away in this one, it gives you permission to jack off. And and that almost ruined it for me. <laughs> almost. <laughs> it says, blessed are the people who pray and give me money and avoid frivolous shit. But then in verse 5, it adds to the list of the blessed, quote, those who safeguard their chastity except with their wives and what their right hands possess. <laughs> For then they are free from blame. I see. End quote. How hilariously quaint and whitewashed. What the mm -hmm. verse actually says is, and the slaves that their right hand possesses. Ah. So it looks like your translator was smoothing down a few mm -hmm. edges there. Yeah, yeah. Much nicer. And this is a you can fuck your slaves thing, right? Because my version talks about controlling your appetites, right? Mm -hmm. And except for your wives and your slaves, as long as you're not a Southpaw, whatever. So <laughs> I'm saying it sounds slave fucky, and I know slave fucky. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they're saying is, it's kind of like a Jamaican pot dealer. You know, you can rape as many slaves and, and wives as you want, as long as you can grab them all at once in your right hand. Like, as many oh, as you... So, <laughs> at least five, if you do it like, you know, bowling balls, kind of. Oh, no. <laughs> Girls, lie down. This is... You're all not participating. We gotta angle it well. better. You gotta fan it. You gotta fan it. <laughs> okay, everyone line up in order of height. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fuck you guys. And then we get more embryology, and this is the key <laughs> phrase that Muslim apologists point to to cite foreknowledge, mm -hmm. because it actually gives a more or less accurate description of the stages of fetal development. Yeah, more or less than more, but yeah. I mean, it implies that at one point you're just skeleton, and that's wrong, <laughs> but it kind of gets some of the stuff right. So Muslims scream and shout about how prophetic it is. Well, yeah, and it's probably worth reminding everybody that Animals miscarry. Mm -hmm. People miscarry. Back in Muhammad's day, the average person was going to encounter a partially developed fetus now and again, or at least hear what they look like. You would have to think Muhammad was profoundly stupid to think that he wouldn't be vaguely familiar with how an embryo developed, and he certainly wouldn't need an ultrasound machine or divine <laughs> guidance for this. Right.
Yeah, I, I filed this section much more under things you can learn from murdering a series of pregnant women than I did under <laughs> prophetic. <laughs> Fun fact, other thing you can learn from murdering a series of pregnant women, they look hilarious when they run. Oh, oh shit. God, you gotta picture it. <laughs> no, you you know. Eli. At you Heath really Renright. He just let me make that joke. <laughs> Get him. Well, it's a great visual, though. You ever really need to take a shit and then you try to run? It's like that, but with... <laughs> Premies and shit instead of just oh, shit. Yeah. And more fear. Yeah. At dissonance pod. <laughs> dissonance <laughs> underscore pod. You got it. And then, and I shit you not, he tells us about Noah and Moses again. Not yeah. new stories about him, mind you. The shit from Genesis uh-huh. again. Yeah, and then it's just 92 verses of how awesome God is and how bad hell sucks. Yeah. And it's literally just the same information packaged in the same way. Often with the same words. Yeah. It's like arguing with a guy on mushrooms. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, man. Time is a flat circle. But if you don't leave so I can fuck this girl with a nose ring, I'm going to ask you if your teeth hurt and ruin your night. <laughs> <laughs> Those photons bother you? Fuck, they do. <laughs> really do. Is it itchy in here? <laughs> And on that note, we're going to earn a three-week furlough from the Quran. So, Quranomaniacs will be back in episode 180. And between now and then, I guess, we'll just have to remind each other about that time that Satan refused to bow to Adam.